Ritzas. My name is David Peterson, and this is The Art of Language Invention. Episode 4, Degree of Synthesis. When you're sitting down to create a language, it might do to keep in mind the degree of synthesis of your language. Synthesis, with respect to language, generally refers to how much information is packed into how much space on average. There have been uh, calls to make this kind of an objective measure so that you could actually, you know, come up with a number and say that, you know, this language is this degree of synthesis, that stuff. Mm. It, it doesn't really, it doesn't really actually pan out. Uh, but it's still a useful idea to keep in mind as you're planning what type of a language you want to have. The degree of synthesis for a language runs the gamut from highly synthetic or agglutinating to not very synthetic at all or isolational. Languages that are in between those extremes are often called either fusional or inflectional, but there really aren't three types. Languages fall everywhere along the spectrum. It's important to keep in mind that synthesis can apply separately to derivation and inflection. For example, English and German have basically the same degree of inflectional synthesis. Uh, we have a tiny bit of morphology on nouns, a tiny bit on adjectives, and a tiny bit more on verbs. When it comes to derivation, though, German routinely makes use of compounds that pile up and become enormous, while English generally does not. Similarly, in Mandarin, while there's only one inflectional affix, a plural suffix for pronouns only, pretty much, there are tons of compound words. It's hard to get through a sentence in Mandarin without using one or more compounds. They may not get as long as Germans, but their frequency gives it a higher degree of derivational synthesis than its rock-bottom degree of inflectional or relational synthesis. If you're designing a naturalistic language, your degree of synthesis should essentially fall out from the evolutionary process. Uh, at every step of the way, essentially the language itself should guide your decision. That is, whether uh, you're going to have uh, some of your old words become inseparable affixes, or if they're going to stay uh, and become like their own separate words, either being auxiliaries or particles or something like that. Uh, the language should really kind of inform you and tell you in what direction you want to go, but of course you can always guide it if you want. One note about especially highly inflecting or, or highly agglutinating languages, we found natural languages that are exclusively suffixing. We've also found natural languages that, you know, feature some suffixing and some prefixing. We have never found a natural language that is exclusively prefixing or that is even predominantly prefixing with some suffixes that we have found the opposite. Um, I'm not sure what necessarily that means. It's probably just a byproduct of, of natural evolution. And it certainly doesn't mean that a language couldn't be that way. That just means we haven't found natural languages that do that. So just something to keep in mind. That's it for this episode. If you have a question you'd like for me to answer on the show, leave a note in the comments or send an email directly to me at djpquery at gmail.com. If you want to see more videos like this one, feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching.